Hello and welcome. On the previous Ion Chromatograph video, I've analyzed a variety of commonly found items ranging from food to body fluid. I reported finding fluoride in my urine and in my whiskey, which I thought was odd, and since uh, no one called me out on this, I'll uh, just call myself out. Hey man, can I talk to you? Oh, hey, you see, oh, oh, what are you doing? Uh, nothing, I'm just, uh, what are, you, what are you wearing a mask? Because of COVID. I don't want to end up like you. What, what do you mean? I've been vaccinated for months. That's what they want you to believe. I don't have time for this. Listen, you misreported uh, fluoride on some samples. What? Here, let me see. You go ahead and have that fixed. Maybe you apologize to people. Towards the end of the video, if you made it that far, I've analyzed some vastly diluted urine and a bit of whiskey and concluded by saying this. Fluorides are likely to be due to reasonable intake of whiskey, which apparently contain some fluoride. Now, how could I have been so wrong? Well, I've been using the EPA 300 recommended colon for common anions, which is not sensitive enough for organic anions such as formate, acetate, oxalate, etc. So I found this AS11 designed for that purpose. But as you will see, I'm not sure the trade-off was uh, beneficial. To use this colon, I have to change the mobile phase from carbonates to hydroxide, which is why you will see a hump for the carbonates in almost every low-level chromatogram, since the carbonates are no longer part of the eluent. After a thorough flush, I had to re-identify all the peaks and retention time and recalibrate, which is a long, tedious, time-consuming and boring process. Since fluoride and some organic anions comes out at the same time, I had to play with the mobile phase concentration and try to separate them like I did with the cation in part 5 of this uh, video series. And here's three commonly found organic anions overlaid with fluoride right there. So if a sample has a lot of organics and no fluoride, or vice versa, one could easily be mistaken for the other. With that in mind, I reanalyzed some whiskey and here's the result. Hey, you got my result yet? Yeah, you don't have COVID, but uh, you fat. Understanding the chemistry of whiskey after some looking around, it is clear that some esters can be responsible for the large amount of acetate. Of course, there's a lot more compounds, but this is what the colon picked up here. Still a lot of chloride in urine, and comparing with the other colon, shows the same peak further away from the chloride. I could not determine if this was actually fluoride, oxalate, urea, or something else like uh, lactate. So this will have to remain undetermined for now. And here lies one of the biggest problems in uh, analytical chemistry. Some analytes behave the exact same way under similar conditions, but are actually completely different. Similar problem with the mass spectrometer and the isobaric interference between molybdenum isotopes and technetium in the plutonium and trinitite video. But I digress. There is something else I wanted to try and I haven't talked about it yet. I have been getting good consistent results with both columns down to the low PPM range. There's a small modification that will allow me to reach the PPB range and get a thousand times better resolution. To get consistent injection volume, I use a sample loop, but replacing it with a guard column and changing the instrument method will have the effect of concentrating my sample before injection. And by doing this, I'm able to verify the purity of my DI water system. So as I just described, the uh, concentrator here, which is nothing more than the guard column in place of the sample loop, allow the sample to be concentrated so we can get to a much lower level of detection in the column here. And uh, we can now detect down to PPB level. This may sound like uh, overkill, but I will need this level of purity in a future video, especially for organic anions. So for example, here's my anion standard at a billion dilution. The pics are still visible. And here's the carbonate hump I was talking about earlier. I could hear some of you saying I could have used distilled water and it might be pure enough. Well, let me show you what it looked like down a PPB level. Not good. Almost a half PPM of chloride and three PPBs of nitrate. Now compare this with my uh, pure water system. Now remember, this is very low level and humps are mostly due to noise and impurities in a sub part per billion level. But is it really worth it to go down this low? I usually analyze pretty dirty things and PPM range is more than enough for most of my analysis. And I'll continue to do that. This was just a proof of concept for one particular future application. But let's compare the two columns pros and cons. The AS4 is able to detect seven analytes mostly found in nature and industrial application. The AS11 
could not reliably pick up sulfate or phosphate at all. The AS-11 could easily detect organic anions, but sometimes identification was difficult. Both of these columns had good reproducibility. The AS-11 allows for carbonate detection, but not quantification. AS-4 has a better response to fluoride, chloride, and single charge ions. So overall, I would say what you care about and the level of detection you need will define the column that you're gonna use for your application. I think I've made my point, and if there's any question left unanswered, I'll be glad to answer them privately. My equipment stands ready for any potential analysis you may need. So, this is probably not your first YouTube video, and you know what to do. Thumbs up if you like it, subscribe if you want, Patreon, bell, share. I hope to see you again on the next one, and thank you for watching. Damn it!